Grace, peace, and mercy are yours from God the Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for all our sins. Amen. God's word for our meditation tonight is we study the petitions of the Lord's Prayer. God's word before us tonight is this part, this petition. Hallowed be thy name. In the Catechism, you may remember memorizing the explanation. What does this mean? God's name is indeed holy in itself. But we pray in this petition that it may be holy among us also. How is this done? When the word of God is taught in its truth and purity, and we as the children of God also lead a holy life according to it, this grant us, dear Father in heaven. But he that teaches and lives otherwise than God's word teaches profanes the name of God among us. From this preserve us, Heavenly Father. Last week we heard, and we hear it once again tonight, or two weeks ago we heard, prayer is an act of worship. It's an act, an action that is only to be directed toward God, not to anyone else, not to any person here or in heaven, but only to God. Scripture tells us that God will not share his glory with another. We should. Prayer is an act of worship, and worship for the Christian is a joy. We of faith utter the words of David. We cry them out, just like he did when he said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. In our worship, in our liturgy, we hear so many songs of praise to the Lord for what he has done for us. Glory be to God on high and on earth. Peace, goodwill toward men. We praise you. We acclaim you as Lord. We praise God for the wonderful things that he does for us. And the first petition of the Lord's Prayer, Hallowed be thy name, sets the tone for all of the petitions that follow. It deals with the name of God. And what is the name of God? Scripture gives us countless of titles for him. God, Lord, Jesus, Lion of the tribe of Judah, Savior, the list goes on and on. But when Jesus teaches us to pray, hallowed be thy name, and he's talking about the name of God, he's speaking about the reputation of God, what he is all about. And the name of God is holy by itself already. That name which tells us who God is and what he has done for us and what he, and what he has done to take away our sins and bring us the gift of eternal life, we find all of that in the Bible. God's word is perfect. It's holy. It's without mistake. In God's word, we not only find out how he wants his people to live, but most importantly, we learn about Jesus the Savior and salvation by grace through faith in him alone. That name, that reputation, once again, sets the tone for all of the petitions to come. Really, this petition of the Lord's Prayer has much in common with the second commandment. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. God's name, his reputation. And while God's name is indeed holy, all by itself, God's name can be and often is profaned, dirty, by people who claim to be his by Christians. Every time we sin, we put a mark on God's reputation. Every time somebody teaches falsely against the word of God or doesn't speak out against false teaching, God's name is profane. It is dirty. God's name he wants to protect. Why? Because through that name, through that reputation, souls are saved for eternity. 
And when that name is dirty, when his reputation is sullied, when his work, when his word is twisted and convoluted, people are not led to heaven. They are led away from the Savior. When we pray this petition or any petition, we must remember this. We need to remember what prayer is. It's not only a conversation with God, but we need to remember what it isn't. Prayer is not manipulating God. How often don't we get that in our heads, or our sinful nature gets it, where we think that when we pray, we can get God to change his mind, or we can talk to him into doing something that he wasn't originally planning on doing. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, that is impossible. Scripture tells us, I, the Lord your God, do not change. Okay? God cannot. That is part of his being God, one of those divine characteristics. And we know that what God does, everything he does is good. He knows better than us. And so when we pray to him, we're not trying to manipulate him. We are holding him to the promises that he's made. To always give us what we need. To always do what is best for us. To work all things for our good and for the good of his, all his people, his church. Prayer is to holding God, holding our Savior to his word. Something else for us to remember as we pray, hallowed or holy be God's name. Only the holy can expect to be hallowed. What do I mean by that? How does, what does God do for you and for me and for every believer through his word? He works faith in our hearts in Christ. He brings us justification, an innocent burden by grace through faith in Jesus alone. God makes us his holy ones. And so only his holy ones can expect anything to be holy for the set apart. What a blessing that is. And what a thing it is for us to pray for. You see, as we pray, hallowed be thy name. We pray that God And when we look at his word, so many times as we're praying this prayer, it's easy for us to think that when God's word is being taught, or a pastor stands up here in the pulpit, or a Sunday school teacher is teaching God's word in the Sunday school room, or if it's at the seminary, a professor teaching students, or in a Christian college where the, where the professors are teaching those students there, it's so often we get in our head that we think, that what's being taught are the teachings of human beings, the teachings of people. No, the teachings of God's word, of his name, are his teachings. He's the teacher. And we're praying for that every time his word is taught by the pastor, by the parent, by the Sunday school teacher, whoever that God's teachings from his word, and not our ideas, and not our take on it, is being proclaimed and given. We're praying that his word be taught according to its truth and purity. Any part of denying God's word dirties his name. And anything that we do living against God's word is something that dirties his name as well. How often does it that happen with us? All of us. We who have been redeemed and washed clean by the blood of Jesus, our sinful natures get, a, get the best of us. We violate God's word and his commandments. And how many times shamefully must we say that the unbelieving world looks at us and cannot see the difference between us and unbeliever? When we pray that God's name be hallowed, we're praying that he help us to live according to that world. 
word so that people don't see sin, so that people don't see the works of the devil, that people don't see unbelief, but they see the reflection of our Savior in everything we say and everything we think. Hallowed be thy name. What a blessed name that is, brothers and sisters. It was a name that was branded beautifully when we were brought to faith. When the water of baptism was poured on our heads, when God's powerful word, his name, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, was spoken, it was placed on you and me, making us members of God's family. That family name that is now yours and mine through faith and through the blood of Christ. May we always pray that prayer boldly and confidently. Hallowed be thy name, the Lord's name. Because again, everything else that we pray for, everything that else that the Lord stands for and does, rests on that blessed, perfect name and reputation found in his word, centered on the cross. Please stand. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. At this time we'll have the collection of John.